Howdy everyone, and today we're checking out quite an interesting new zoom lens from Fuji, their XF 18-120mm f4 LMPZ WR. What jumps out from that name immediately is the very long zoom range, the full frame equivalent of 27 to 183 mm combined with a constant maximum aperture of f4. I can't think of any other full frame or APS-C camera lens in the world with that kind of zoom range and constant aperture, which makes it especially well suited to video work, as you won't be getting flickering light level changes as you zoom in and out. On top of that though, shooting at 120mm and f4 will also give you more deeply out of focus backgrounds than a typical super zoom lens. The PZ in this lens's name indicates its power zoom function, another neat feature for video work, and the zooming is all done internally, which is also helpful for the lens's weather sealing, and for balancing it more easily on an electronic gimbal if you're using one of those. To control the power zoom, you have three options. Firstly, a small button on the side, which will slowly and continually zoom in or out after a single press in whatever direction. You have to press it again to stop. It's when slowly zooming at the widest angles, by the way, that you can see a little image warping in the corners as the distortion correction changes its pattern, but this only happens when zooming at the widest angles. Anyway, your second zooming option is the zoom and focus rocker. This is spring loaded and can also adjust your focus if you hold down the button next to it during use. As a zoom rocker though, it allows a variety of zoom speeds, the fastest of which you can see here. Finally, there's a more conventional zoom ring, which turns smoothly and offers the same functionality and speeds as the zoom rocker. This here is the fastest the lens allows you to zoom in and out. Now, you might have noticed that that video footage looks a little shaky here. This lens does not have image stabilization, and neither does my X-T3 camera, unfortunately, so it is definitely a lens that will be much easier to shoot with on one of Fuji's newest camera bodies, which has in-body image stabilization built in. This is probably a contributor to the lens's price of 900 US dollars, which is a little lower than you might expect for a specialist zoom option with such impressive parameters. Oh, and one other thing, make sure your camera's firmware is updated when using this lens. The video you've been watching so far was shot with my X-T3 camera on firmware version 4.3, Here's the same footage on firmware 4.0 before I updated it just to test this lens, and as you can see, zooming in and out reveals a verifocal nightmare, so update your lens's firmware. I know that the relevant firmware updates are available for the X-T3, X-T4, X-H2S and X-S10 cameras, but I'm not sure about the others, ask Fuji before you buy if you're not sure. There are also rumours that Fuji will release a further camera firmware update that will give you more options on how the zoom controls will work. Hopefully we'll see that emerging one day. So the lens is clearly designed for video work. Let's take a look at the rest of its build quality now. Its body is mostly made of plastic, so it's actually not very heavy, and Fuji claim that it's weather sealed very well. It certainly has a decent sized gasket at the rear mount. As well as all those zoom controls, the lens also has a focus ring which turns very smoothly. Some good news here is that the lens displays very little breathing when you're pulling focus, and that is whether you're zoomed in or zoomed out. The lens's autofocus motor is quick, confident, silent and accurate, as you can see here. The lens has a 72mm front filter thread, and it also comes with a plastic hood, and just to remind you again, it does not have image stabilization. Overall, it's an interesting lens for video makers that still handles quite well for photography, but I will mention that I think Fuji missed a bit of a trick here by not including a smooth turning aperture ring, which some more advanced video shooters might have appreciated. Anyway, let's move on and look at image quality now. I'll be testing the lens on my Fuji X-T3 with its 26 megapixel APS-C sized sensor. At 18mm and f4, we see excellent sharpness in the middle of the image with very good contrast. Corner image quality is looking quite a lot softer here, although it'll be more than enough for 4K video work. 
Stopping down to f5.6 or f8 doesn't help the situation though. Let's zoom in a bit to 50mm now at f4, again, centre image quality is excellent. Corner sharpness is a little better in the middle of the zoom range, looking reasonably good but still a bit softer than the middle. Stop down to f5.6 or f8 for some minuscule improvements, leading to pretty nice image quality from corner to corner. Finally, let's zoom all the way into 120mm. At f4, image quality in the middle is very good, although contrast is lower than at wider angles. Corner image quality unfortunately is very soft when you're zoomed in. Stopping down to f8 or f11 doesn't really help much. Well, that was broadly what I'd expect to see from a lens with such a long zoom range and a slightly brighter than normal aperture. Image quality in the middle is always very nice, but corner image quality suffers at the wide and telephoto ends. Stills photographers may be unimpressed, but this is more than sharp enough for video makers, which is clearly who the lens is primarily intended for. Ok, let's take a look at vignetting and distortion now. Normally, in-camera corrections will take care of this for you, but here are some pictures I took in RAW to check out the actual performance. At 18mm we see moderately strong barrel distortion and some vignetting at f4 which goes away as you stop down to f8. Zoom in just to 23mm and that distortion dramatically flips into a pincushion pattern. Zoom in as far as 50mm and it gets extreme. It stays this strong as you zoom all the way in and at f4 we still get some vignetting. Stop down to f5.6 though and it's gone. So, if you're shooting RAW and your editing software does not do these corrections for you, you should look out for those issues. Ok, let's look at close up image quality now. Zoom in and the lens can get you as close as 60cm to your subject, which is great. At f4, close up image quality is soft. f5.6 and f8 look much sharper, although contrast remains a little lower than at normal distances. Now, let's see how well the lens works against bright light. Whether zoomed in or zoomed out, flaring is very low here and contrast remains high. Finally, let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. Generally, the bokeh looks fine here, not the smoothest in the world, but neither are there any distracting problems. And well, that's it. What do you think? To my mind, the Fuji XF 18-120mm f4 is clearly a lens intended for video makers, with its great zoom range and zoom controls, low focus breathing and good contrast. The main fly in the ointment is its lack of image stabilisation, but Fuji are increasingly building that into their cameras nowadays. Still, photographers will be put off by its soft image corners, although again, that won't really be such an issue for video makers, unless you're trying to shoot an 8K or something crazy like that, and I don't think there are any 8K Fuji cameras yet. So, I'd quite happily recommend it as an interesting and versatile option for video work, but stills photographers will probably want something a bit sharper. Nice to try something a bit different sometimes. Is this a lens you would go for? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my Patreon page in the description, where supporters of this channel get access to all kinds of exclusive bonus content. Ciao for now.